Hello and welcome to the Remedy Fibers Podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today we have a quick check-in. I was hesitant whether I should podcast because I've been suffering with crazy allergies. They really took me down for the past week and I haven't really got much to show you. That's why I was hesitant. One, because I'm still a little bit congested my nose is like since i was blowing my nose so much kind of started getting you know how when you're not feeling well like i'll spare you the details however i think i will try to make an episode and we'll see how it works i'm so excited after four months my husband is finally coming back home from spain he plays basketball overseas and he's coming later this evening i'm so excited and we have a cake he doesn't know we have a cake it's a surprise and i love giving surprises i'm not always a fan of receiving surprises depending on what it is but i i do love a good surprise of when they have no idea what's coming their way and we both love cake so me and benny are gonna be so excited i have someone to help me walk benny do weekend adventures again so yes i'm so so happy but if you're new here i live in northern california with my husband and dog benny i love everything yarn related and i hope you stay for my yarn journey but we'll just get started with what i'm wearing today this is my rocket tee by tanis lavalli and i love it i haven't worn it in a while probably because it's starting to get really warm where i'm at it is april and we are already starting to reach that 80 degree weather which is about 26 27 celsius and it's just getting really warm and i'm really wearing this for the podcast i think if i was to go outside with the mohair in this it'll be a little bit too hot but this is a really great pattern if you have one skein of fingers ring and one skein of mohair or surrey silk depending on your body measurements you might have to get two skeins of fingering and two skeins of mohair for this pattern i did knit a size 38 and i did use a us6 or four millimeter knitting needles my first work in progress is my felix cardigan and i've made significant progress since you've seen it last and i've kind of reached sleeve island the sweater is 90 percent done i just need to work on my second sleeve and then I need to order some buttons. But let me show you how much progress I've worked on since we last met. So I already finished both button bands and I decided to pick up every stitch along the way. I wasn't skipping anything and I liked how it looked. I didn't think there was any issue to have to skip anything. And then I added stitch markers because those will be where my buttons go. I already did my button holes for the other side of the button band and then for the neck pickup, it tells you to pick up, I'm going to throw out a random number because it is a paid for pattern. Let's say it tells you to pick up 100 stitches for the neckline. Everyone who knits this design is picking up 100 stitches, doesn't matter what size you are. And when I first knit this, I followed the pattern exactly to the T and it was very wide. And this time I went very extreme and radically. If the pattern told me to cast on 100, I cast on 60 or, or 70. So here I only cast on, I think it was 55 or in the 50 range. You don't have to have an exact number. I think you just need to have an even or odd count, the pattern tells you. And it's very small compared to what the designer wanted me to do. I'm so happy with it. Beautiful. This would be a great fall and winter sweater. Not necessarily good for the spring and summer where I live in California. So I'll try it on for you so you can kind of see what we are working with. It is really warm. It's a really warm sweater. The yarn that I use is Istex Let Lopi in the Galaxy colorway. It's a black heathered with some teals and purples in it. It is more on the scratchy side. However, when I do wear this in the future, I will be wearing like a long sleeve or a turtleneck. It will be more of a layering piece. So this sleeve is done. You've already seen that. You can see how significant the decreases are. And if I was actually going to button it, because there's going to be a button hole here and a button right on the neck band. If I was to actually button it, I think I would have to make it bigger because it is very pretty much it's not tight on my neck, but the circumference of my neck. However, I said in the past I'm not really one to button my sweater, and if I was to button it, I'll probably button one of the lower buttons. And so really the only thing that's missing is 
this sleeve and what's been holding me back is when I've had allergies congestion my eyes are watering sneezing coughing the pollen count around here is extremely high and I've just been not having the mental energy after work to work on my sleeve so this was supposed to be done but I still have about another week to work on this sleeve once I start feeling better I'm starting to feel more like myself again so let me know what you think about this I wouldn't recommend picking up about 50 ish stitches if I was to do this differently maybe 60 maybe 65 just because you don't want it so tight on your neck and if it's an itchy material you don't want that itch on your neck but honestly it works for me and I wanted more of that cinched in look and I'm hoping that when I block it you see how it's kind of puckering right here I'm hoping that when I block it it'll kind of smooth and flatten out if not we might have to retweak the neckline so I'm so over the moon with this I'm happy that the neckline worked because that was a big worry last week's episode I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to frog this sweater my next work in progress was actually frogged this was the Amarin shawl by Hohi Locatelli I worked on maybe 10% of the shawl maybe 5% of the shawl and I received an email from Ravelry that there was a pattern update there was a mistake written in the pattern so I was able to frog that I haven't restarted it just because I've been down for the count How However, that's something that I'm going to plan to recast on in the next couple weeks. My next work in progress is my second skein of my spin to sweater project. This is the fiber that I received from Wonderland Dye Works and I was able to spin up a second skein so right now I have two skeins of this blue colorway and I have a third one working up on the spinning wheel I've already unraveled my second braid and I've already pre kind of drafted them a little bit broken them up into pieces so it's easier for me to spin and I think given that I wasn't feeling so great this week the spinning really got me through I was able to get significant progress on my spinning wheel this however has yet to be blocked yet but I'm just gonna hold off just so I'm not constantly wasting water I can just throw them all in the bath when it's time to soak them and I'm really happy with how it's coming out I feel like it's very consistent to my other skein that I spun last week and it's really fun I, I'm loving the color even though it is more of a tonal and there's not a lot of color variation the blue color is really striking for me and I'm kind of impatient to see what I can use this with and that's why it's working up way faster than what I anticipated when I originally said that I was going to work on a spin to sweater project I said it might take me a year the way that I'm working on this and how meditative and relaxing it is it might even take six months four or five months I'm really interested to see how this yarn is gonna work up in a garment given that it is hand spun and it might even be a blanket I'm not sure blanket or a sweater I'm leaning more towards a sweater but it's something that I kind of want to be wrapped in just how soft how luxurious it is so I'll be spinning away I'll keep you updated how my progress goes but so far I'm working on my second braid and I have one more braid to go before I decide whether it's enough yardage for me to work on a garment or whether I'm going to have to make another order in a similar color because she doesn't have this color available anymore so as for future cast-ons, I told you that I'm going to have to recast on my Amarin Shaw by Hohi Locatelli, but I am going to make another cardigan, and this is my first ever petite knit cardigan. I might change my mind, but as of right now, this is the pattern that I have in mind. This is the yarn that I bought for that pattern, and we'll see how it goes because I have never knit a petite knit pattern. I know that they're relatively easy, but I'm not one to jump on trends or popular patterns if there's like a lot of hype around it. I think I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone because there's a reason why everyone likes them and I really like the style and the fit of the champagne cardigan so I wanted to go with a red color so I got the Yarnalia Marvel this was from Joanne's website and this is a 60% wool a 20% acrylic and a 20% nylon and then my Surrey silk just came in and this is the first time I want to say that I've 
made anything with Surrey Silk. I've normally just leaned more towards mohair, but I wanted to give this one a try. And this is by Plymouth Yarn Surrey Stratus, and it's 68% alpaca, 32% nylon. And I was thinking I wanted more of like a hot pink fuchsia color to go with this more dull red. But when I went online, this was the closest thing that they had to like a pinkish color. So I think that this red is kind of giving me crimson, Christmas type of color. So I'll be interested to see how they blend together. But I wanted a red cardigan and I thought it would be really pretty with like a jean dress or a white dress or just kind of that early summer weather when you need to throw on a cardigan. It's really soft. Both of these are really soft and the Surrey Silk has no itch whatsoever. So I'm so excited to see how this will be, but this will be a future cast on once I build up a little bit more energy from these allergies. So if you follow me on social media, I have Remedy Fibers on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. I made a video showcasing my unboxing of my recent purchase at Imagine It, a local yarn store located in San Francisco. And I was able to get the US 2.5 or 3 millimeter knitting needles so I can work on that secret project that I didn't forget about. It's still there. As well as my Surrey Stratus and then two balls of my East Exlet Lopi. I decided to order two balls and good thing that I did because I ran out of one, the one that I originally had. This one has been helping me with the button band and the neck band and then I want to say this might even be enough to work on one whole sleeve but just so that I'm not risking it I have that extra ball as a backup. Other than that I've been pretty much busy at work. Work is going by way too fast. We are in a quarter system and we have 10 weeks in a quarter and I can't believe we're already headed to week three and time is just zooming way too fast and before I was really excited for the summer weather but the heat the heat is brutal here and i'm kind of missing my my cold spring weather and as we venture into warmer weather i'm thinking of whether i do want to make more summer knits and summer garments or maybe just more home accessories and smaller projects just because i am starting to get hot and i know we have ac but Sometimes you kind of want to just switch off into the summer mode, summer wears. So we'll see how the next few weeks go. I know I've been on a cardigan kick. I made the Empire State cardigan. I'm working on my Felix cardigan. I want to do the Champagne cardigan. But I think I've just really been inspired by watching all of the YouTube podcasts. Everyone's making cardigans. And I've been especially inspired by Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique. She just made the Wave of Chain jacket. And that's something that's been on my list for a long time. Last year when I went to the wine country yarn crawl they had a sample of the wave of change jacket i tried it on and it just fit immaculately so it's something that i have on my list hopefully in the future but if you've noticed how i like to work on my projects i'll kind of make sure i'm getting close to the end of one and then start thinking about another one not necessarily trying to plan way too much in advance maybe like one to two projects in advance i feel like that helps me not get into losing my motivation for knitting and crochet but surprisingly the beginning of this year was heavy on the crochet and now i'm going heavy into the knitting and so it's interesting to see these patterns and these ups and downs and how our motivation is one thing that i did forget to mention is that advent season is upon us so there's a lot of yarn dyers that are going to be promoting their yarn advents for the month of december so you'll get mini hand skeins that you can open each day in the month of december and make either a garment a blanket a lot of people use them for crocheted blankets this one right here was from chelsea yarns back in 2019 and it was an advent that i used for a granny square blanket but I finally made the splurge and I decided to get the 2024 Chelsea Yarns Advent. And I don't know, let me check if she still has them for sale. Sadly, I think she sold out. It was opened from Friday, I think, in, into over the weekend. And they're a hot commodity. So this year's Advent was inspired by a Western holiday. And I felt it was so perfect because Beyonce just released her album, Cowboy Carter. I live in the West Coast. It is very desert, Western-like over here. Like, it's normal to see people wearing cowboy boots or cowboy hats. It's very... In 
ingrained in the culture here and even if I never live in California like in the next couple years it will always be a memory of this year how special it is but also living in California for the last three years and California is very expensive to live in compared to where I lived in Pennsylvania and who knows if I'll live here for a long time. I do love it here. Me and my husband love it here in California. At least I'll have this advent as a homage or a really like a like a cozy memory of my time here. I love my job. I love the place I work. I love this city that I'm in. I love California. The part that I'm in. California is a very huge and ginormous, bigger than I thought it was. So the little tiny part that I'm in, I really like. But I know there's other parts that have a whole bunch of stuff going on, a whole bunch of shenanigans. But I just really enjoy this advent. I thought it was perfect, spot on. And if you are hesitant about investing in an advent like I was, a lot of yarn dyers use the shop. I think it's called shop or e-shop where you can break down the payments so you're not spending or splurging a big chunk of money I always feel self-conscious when I'm doing like a big splurge so that kind of helped offset the big cost of investing in an advent but I'm starting to feel congested again and it's a little bit difficult to breathe and talk so I'm gonna cut this episode short hopefully it's not too congesty but let me know what you're working on down below if you're into advents or purchase one this advent season and I hope that you and your family are happy healthy and safe talk to you soon and maybe my husband Brian can make a future cameo since he will be back later today i'm so excited but take care hope you are well and hope to talk to you next week